Alright, how's it going everybody? This is a short little tutorial. Special request I've been forgetting about that I need to get done. Now that Greg, I think, is done with changing circuits, we're going to look at circuits. You have your T1 basic circuit up to your tier 6 ultimate circuit. You also have other mod circuits in here, such as Magic and Dirium, Signalium, uh, your range of Buildcraft ones. And then you have these, which are the advanced circuits, the processor crystal circuits. We are going to focus just on the basic to ultimate circuits today. And first thing you're going to need is a distillation tower to make plastic. You will also need tungsten to be able to make a smelter. And you will need iridium to make a crystal crystallization crucible. So it is not cheap to get into circuits. A lot of stainless steel, 7 tungsten, 7 iridium. This is a very basic way of doing what needs to be done. It is completely automated from going from here to here just by the two machines sitting next to each other. So what we are attempting to make are these silicon bulls. There is also a redstone alloy buell which is used for your more advanced circuit parts here. You can see these use tiny crystalline redstone alloy where your most basic ones here will use tiny crystalline silicon. But you can also use the redstone. One nice thing with Greg Tech 6 is any circuit can be used for a lower circuit. So if you have the material to make ultimate circuits, you'll never have to make anything below that. You can just automatically make the ultimates and use them for everything. So, first thing is you need to get some silicon and some monazit in here. Um, that's the easiest way first off to do it. Here's the monazit. And if we look at recipes in here for the monazit, you will see in the smelter, it will give helium. And a 50% chance of a small pile of uh, rare earth, you know, that's for the small, so this will be 50% of regular. And you get a 0.5 unit of helium. So if you come over here and look at the recipes here, you will need, uh, let's get to helium, one unit of helium for one buell. Nine units of helium for the nine buell if you want to do it that way. The other thing you'll have to put in here is the molten silicon or the molten redstone alloy, depending on which way you're going. And then you need something for it to grow off of, which would be a tiny or a full dust, depending on if you're doing one or nine at a time. Remember, it's a lot more time, 60 minutes for one. Or 540 minutes for nine of them and you have to keep this running all of that time so what I did is I actually back here behind the wall put two hoppers and a drawer that I can fill with charcoal which is feeding into here and then I have an ash return system down here to catch all of the ash so I can just let it sit here and run. So you'll melt your silicon in here, you'll melt your monazit to get your helium in here. There are other gases that you might have seen when I was flipping through here like neon and xenon that you can use but those right now are really painful to get. Helium is the only one that you can get early game out of monazit. You can also get helium through glowstone if you want to choose that. If we look for recipes for getting it, you have the regular smelter recipe for the monazit, or you can, you know, centrifuge to get the helium or neon from there, but you only get one, 
one unit of one liter of helium or uh, neon so this is a pretty big rig I'll show it to you in a minute that I have that's making this this way because it's made for a different reason and then you have the cinder fuse recipe for 10 glowstone this is a hundred and sixty GU that's why I choose to do it the other way and go with monazit you also have endstone dust which is a little more reasonable if you want to go to the end to get it you get 0.125 of it there so I think monazit is a very good way of doing it and then the other thing you're going to need to do after you wait long times for that to get done is take your buels, either cut them with a hand saw or put them into a buzz saw, which will give you the crystalline plate. Then put it in the buzz saw again or cut it with a hand saw, and that will give you your tiny ones, and you will actually get tiny piles of silicon out with it. And you'll end up with these plates right here, which is what you use to make your little circuit parts, which are these right here. These are advanced ones, and these are ultimate ones. Now, if you look at the recipe here, you will need a press, only at 16 GU to do it. And then depending on which kind of circuit part you need, you will need fine wires. Uh, the basics use redstone where the good ones will use fine red alloy wire, advanced use gold and signalium, and so on and so forth. But they all use this 16 GU setup that I have here. This is actually a very crappy way of automating it, but it worked, so I did it. I'm going to do a different way of doing it next time. Um, this is the rig that I have set up for making helium, neon, and argon, which is for those very advanced things. You need this helium neon. Um, so that's what I was talking about. About It takes a pretty big rig to get helium that way. Um, the next thing you're going to need is the plastic pulp, which you get from your, your distillation tower by processing oil in it. And you will get tiny piles of plastic pulp out. And then you need to turn that into a plate. You have two choices for doing so. You can either extrude it with a plate mold, which will be one for one. Or you can throw it into a crucible, which will be three pulp for two plates. So you will have a little bit of loss by doing it in the crucible. And then your next thing is silicon dioxide dust. That can come from a multiple range of places. One of the easiest ways I found is to use either nether quartz or some kind of quartz you find in the overworld. Throw it into a crucible, heat it up to a thousand K, and then just scoop it out with your hand. And uh, you will have scrap of silicon dioxide which then you can either shred or use a mortar on to turn it into this dust or another way you can do it later on is by processing redstone you will get a lot of it along with your ruby dust in a centrifuge i'm using a large centrifuge but a regular centrifuge will work and then you need to take the plastic plate that you made and the silicon dust put that into a press and that will make this plate you'll see plastic sheet silicon dioxide dust makes a circuit plate this is the basis of all of your circuits so what you need then is to get either some gold platinum or copper there are different ways of doing this, but with machines, you can take a, get in the right box here, a copper plate, or a gold plate, or a platinum plate, and you put them into a cluster mill here, 
there is a tool way of doing this, which I will show you here. If I click on the right thing, you can use fine, sig fine wire of whatever it is, copper, gold, platinum, in this case, signalium, and that'll make your circuit wiring. Or you can do what I am doing here, which is a precision laser engraving with foil, and that will make it as well. So one plate will give you four foil out of the cluster mill. You put that into the laser engraver, and that will make you your fine wiring which you then take back over to the press and you press the two of these together same power needed to do this job so you just throw it in your press and you get your part out there is a steam way of powering this press you don't have to use electricity this is a more advanced setup i'm doing here and then once you have your board then you need to pick what kind of parts you want to put on it. So depending on which board you have, depends on which parts you want to put on it. So say you're just wanting to make the very basic board, you can do basic circuit parts on a platinum plate. Very expensive, but you can do it. You can also do it on a gold. You can also do it on the regular copper one, which is the one that's actually required for this. The other two are just so you can unify it and make all of one kind. But that gives you your basic circuit board that needs to be soldered. You will need four of these parts. Again, this is where you need the fine wire and your tiny crystalline plates. And in this case, it's redstone. You will take those and whichever one of the three boards you choose, put them back in here, and that will make you your board that needs to be soldered. I will go ahead and make an advanced plate here, which is four advanced parts and a gold plate. And this will pop me out over here. A circuit board advanced needs to be soldered. So now you have the last step, which is another smelter. This one is used to make um, solder, which I don't have any in here. You put soldering alloy in here, which you will make in your crucible with tin and antimony. Um, for your very first ones, if you look here at the tier one, you can use tin or lead or soldering alloy in the bath, and that'll still make you a tier one. Now, if you put a, a, a tier two here, the good one into tin, you will actually get a tier one. Wait a minute. Let's see. Circuit board good in tin will give you a circuit that is good. A good for basic if you use lead. And then soldering alloy, which is always the best choice, is good to good. Advanced should be that you go from soldering alloy, which is the best choice, which will always give you the right output. Lead will then drop you all the way down to the basic, and tin will drop you down to the good. So lead is your worst choice, tin is your medium choice, and soldering alloy is the best choice. So when you're making your basic circuits, you can use tin or lead to bathe it rather than soldering alloy without any loss because there isn't anywhere to go below it. But when you get up into your ultimate circuits here, if you use lead on it, you're going to end up with an elite. If you use tin, you're going to end up with a master. And then, you know, what you actually were trying to make with the soldering alloy. 
And then that is the circuit that you use for all of your other... Um, this is what you use to make all your covers and your circuits and things like that. The master is what you use to make these crystal processors here. And that is what is needed for these bigger processing array circuits. But we will get into that at another time. This is your basic way of making circuits. I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions on the process, let me know. Hopefully I've answered everything well enough that you can jump in and start making circuits for yourself. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.